Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Have you gone gray? Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today's episode is gray still relevant. Many people got on the gray train. It has been popular since 2011. Really, quite a long time, Kelly. And I think a lot of us have gray walls in our house. I do. Quite a long time. And yes, it's a burning question these days, whether gray is still relevant. So we're going to give you our thoughts on it today. And I can say the short answer for me is yes. What do you think, Anita? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for listening today. (laughs) I think we're done here. Gotta go. I got some errands to do. Gotta run. Well, no. that just saves us a lot of time. How could I possibly stop talking? That's impossible. <laughs> I am so excited to talk about this topic because I feel strongly about gray, kind of like I feel about Pluto being a planet. I think that was totally unfair oh, that yes. they demoted Pluto. And I think some people still feel that, that it's a planet. And I well, I think, feel... he can, I think he's back now as a planet or she or, or it, whatever. So, I had heard that. I'm really yes. believed, but I'm not sure everyone's convinced, but I am. And I'm also convinced that gray is here to stay. Yes, it is. So I wanted to talk a little bit kind of about the trends to begin with, how we, where we, how we got here and why we're even asking. And that is, like I said, around 2011, the prominent wall color was kind of that beige color. So when you would buy a house, it would be beige. And then, yes, I did have my, uh, my Tuscan phase where I had the golden walls. Uh, and then I had the oxblood red walls dining room walls. So I really got into these reds and gold colors. And then when we we went from the autumnal phase, kind of the opposite end of the color spectrum to grays and blue. So we went from the warm colors to these cool colors, which really resonated with me. I loved the grays and the whites. All my furniture was red. And that's when I went crazy making linen slip covers in kind of an oatmeal color and recovering my furniture with grain sack material. And that also went with those grays. So I really loved the coolness of it, the softness. I love that kind of a Scandinavian, Gustavian feeling, the peacefulness of it. And that's about when people went with the grays on the wall in around 2011. That's when the bloggers and... The influencers started doing it. And then I would say it took several years. You know how this goes, Kelly. It took several years for the builders to pick up on the fact that things had shifted. And then they started going with with the grays. And then everyone on Pinterest was doing it. Everyone was doing it. And you know, some people did it beautifully, beautifully with the grays. And some people did it with some grays that were, let's call them questionable, a little more of the blue side, kind of the steely side that just felt cold. And I, as, if it's a wall color, I don't think you want that cold gray on the wall. So I'm going to come out and say that should have never been a thing, that, that shade of gray. Yeah, the cool grays are really hard to live with. It's um, You could think about it it's a little Scandinavian, but you have to add in the warmth like you did with the textiles and whatnot. It can also seem very minimalistic. And yes, bottom line, just sort of cold. So some people that tried the grays and they weren't educated, they weren't DTT listeners, they didn't know about the undertones and they unfortunately picked the wrong grays for them and then they weren't happy. But um, gray was wildly popular and you saw it everywhere. And yes, it was done well and it was done badly, but it was decidedly done, right? And gray everywhere. Now, right. And gray is now no longer so much in the limelight. It's not the it color, but because I think what you just said, it was everywhere. It was ubiquitous. It was too much. 
Right. And and done in this kind of colder tones. So mm-hmm. I think there was kind of a move away from it. And then we went to the bright whites, which started, I want to say, around 2016 is when I first started seeing the bright white walls. And we're moving away from the bright white now into a warmer white and the softer grays. Yes. And so gray is still very much relevant and it should be part of your decorating. The reason why it waned, as we said, is it suffered from too much of a good thing, too much exposure and gray in the hands of rookies. And so they weren't getting it right. And then they were disappointed. And then they would tell their friend, oh, no, don't do gray because I hate my living room or fill in the blank. And so gray started, everyone started to turn on gray. But gray is a fabulous color with nuance and tones. It mixes well with others. It can be and should be considered a neutral. And it's really elegant. 2011, 2000 Schmevin, Gray was not invented in 2011, no. right? Gray has been with us forever. Uh, the classic gray wool suit. Uh, you know, there's gray everywhere. When my parents bought their first little, little Cape, Cape Cod house, the lady they bought it from, Mrs. Ball, everything was gray. She was gray. Her hair was gray. Her dog was gray. <laughs> the carpet was wall-to-wall gray. The walls were gray. I mean, she didn't know how tre- on trend she would have been. She would have been Instagram celebrity superstar in 2011. So gray's been around for a long time. It just bubbled to the top, just like other colors do. Sometimes they really catch on. I don't think the green trend with all the paint companies using it as their color of the year this year, we understood why, because people were really going back to nature after COVID and all that and really seeking the outdoors. But green has not hit hard like gray did because gray is very livable. It's an easy color to work into your decor. It's classic. It can be calming in the right tones uh, as paint, but it can be used in a lot of other ways in your home, smaller, more subtle touches, and it really works well with a variety of different tones. So you got to keep using gray. I think the value of gray is that it adds color to the wall but in a very neutral way. And if you go with a soft, warm gray, almost toward a putty, it just goes with everything. And it kind of takes on a different look during the day. Whereas a green, you know, there's so many different kinds of greens and not everything is going to go with those greens. Whereas the grays, if they're the soft, warm grays, Pretty much everything goes with that color. It has a presence, but it's not screaming at you, plays well with others. So it's a really nice choice. And I think Anita has some color, actual paint colors to share with you all today. That would be great choices if you want to try gray or if unfortunately you tried gray before and you picked a cold gray and you're not happy with it, but you still want to have gray in your life, then maybe you can try these colors that we're going to talk about today. Right. Okay. Well, let's get into those. Uh, And I know you have some gray favorites as well. My favorite is the Agreeable Gray by Sherwin-Williams. And like I said, it's more of a putty. It's a very warm gray. And I have a lot of French antiques and gold in my house. Not Not the Tuscan golds, but I mean like gold frames or maybe a gold accessory. So this particular color gray goes very well with gold. The cold blue-toned grays don't go well with with gold accents. So that's, that's one of the things I really liked about it. So owl gray, I think, is a very similar Benjamin Moore color to put on your wall. And I have a couple of other Benjamin Moore choices that are just slightly darker. That's Stonington Gray and Silver Chain. Those are mine. Oh, okay. (laughs) Those are the ones I have in my house. No, those are great. And they're pure grays, but they would tend to be warmer. They are not cold. They really stay true gray on the wall. I don't read any blue, and you know how I feel about blue in my house. So I wouldn't want that. Those are wonderful colors. Yes, a similar color from Sherwin-Williams would also be a repose gray. I think that's going to be very similar to the Silver Chain by Benjamin Moore. And I know you had another color that you were going to talk about from Benjamin Moore. Yeah, Edgecomb Gray. It's a color I have not used in my home, but this is the second client that I've suggested it for, and we've used it in uh, rooms 
The first client, it was a room that got lots and lots of natural light and it looked spectacular. And I most recently, like, I don't even know if it's dry yet, used it in a client's north facing office. And boy, it looks spectacular. It looks a little darker, it reads a little darker, but it is juxtaposed to the white trim that we did in the semi gloss. And of course, use my favorite, Simply White. It looks spectacular. So that's edge comb gray. It's kind of a grige or a grayish, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And that is a lovely choice. And I think if you're going for the grays, you want to go for something with the warmer undertone as we've discussed. So something that's almost like a muskety brown undertone, like a warm, a molish kind of color. You can see that maybe coming through or even a green undertone. That's beautiful. Or then slide into the darker charcoals. If you wanted to go a little bit darker, you could go with a Rockport gray. That is going to be more, again, toward the putty, but it's a bit darker. And that is Benjamin Moore. Some of these lighter grays that we're talking about kind of, to me, look like an aged plaster on the wall. Would you agree with that? Yeah, they do. You're absolutely right. And so I think that's why they just feel like an aged wall and they go so well with so many different things, especially, um, like I said, for a house that has antiques, I think it works beautifully, but it's beautiful with other styles also. So I think it works so well with so many different looks. Uh, If you want to go even darker, you can always go with our favorite Kendall charcoal from Benjamin Moore. And that's a pretty dark gray. You could put that on the wall, but I like to think of this more as something you would put on some, uh, maybe a built-in cabinetry or an island in your kitchen, uh, I think that would be beautiful. Or even on a a chest of drawers, I think it would be very beautiful. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. 
So another way to continue using gray or to start using gray in your home is in textiles. It is a wonderful color, particularly, I think, in the darker range to use for bigger pieces of furniture, like a sofa, a sectional, a love seat, a chair, dining room chairs, upholstered gray. I think it is a really great neutral and works with just about everything. If you wanted to go totally neutral and just stay with creams and whites and ecrus and work in gray, well, that is incredibly elegant and beautiful way to go. It also is going to look beautiful with the light pinks and plums and greens and even browns. So many colors will work with gray because it really is at its heart a neutral, especially if it's done right. And I like to look for gray fabrics that have a heathering tone to them, which means that there's different colors of gray coming through the fabric, you know, in the material, because I think not only does that give it interest and actually makes it even feel more textural to your eye, but also it will hide a myriad of sins, whether it be spills or footprints or dog or cat issues, things like that. When you've got a darker tone plus the heathering, it is going to really help the piece of furniture look its best for the longer period of time. I think it is a great color to use for furniture. And there's quite the range from light gray to dark gray. I think of the lighter gray as more possibly traditional in some senses. And the darker gray tends to look more contemporary. So it just kind of depends on your look on which direction you would go. But I think that's a beautiful look. And like you said, if you have pets or small kids or maybe a family that likes to eat on the sofa, then I think that darker gray is a great way to go. If you're using gray, I will say this. There's so many ways to add it. Like you said, pillows, furniture, throws, rugs, all that sort of thing. But if I were doing it, I would probably do my foundation pieces in the gray. Like we always say, neutrals for the furniture because those are big ticket items. And when you're tired of if it was blue or green or pink or purple, then when you're tired of that color, then you're talking about buying a new piece of furniture or slip covering it or even recovering it. Whereas if you just stick with the gray, then you can change out those colors with the pillows and the throws and that sort of thing. But if I did the gray on my furniture pieces, I would definitely add some color in. I wouldn't just do everything in a gray. I would add color with the pillows, with some throws, in the rug. And remember, even if you're doing a neutral room, that does not mean zero color in the room. That tends to be, well, I'm not going to say it doesn't look good because it can look very elegant depending on how it's done but it's hard to pull off let me say it that way you have to really know what you're doing to pull off a room with absolutely no color in it and you know we see that a lot is our rooms that have no color so that's that would be my tip is if you choose gray you definitely want to add some color some places well I think that is one of the problems with gray sort of not being so hot anymore is that people did it they went hard for it And they made everything in the room gray. So it looked like room in a box. Like, oh, pick (laughs) the gray version of room in a box. So you have a gray carpet, you have gray furniture, you have maybe a variety of tones of gray pillows, you have a gray throw, you have gray drapes. I mean, if this is resonating with anyone and that's what your home looks like or your living room or another room in your home, add some color. Because I... I definitely think you're going to like the room a lot more if you do that, and you're not going to be so off the gray. Keep the gray. Keep it for the bigger pieces. You can even have it predominantly be be gray, but there needs to be something else going on the room to complement the gray, to make the gray look good, juxtaposed to it. If it's just all gray, it just lies flat. I mean, it it would even sort of do that even if it was magenta. You know, if there's just all magenta, you're like, eh, there's nothing really interesting then for the eye to see. So clearly, if it's a more subtle color or a gray or a neutrals, it's even more pronounced that it's really kind of just boring. So you want to add something else in there. And gray is just such a lovely fabric. I just think of like, you know, charcoal wool in gray or chunky sort of fisherman sweater, gray throws, Mm -hmm. velvet gray pillows, absolutely gorgeous and really elegant, really classic. 
And you can just add those into any room and get the little dose of gray that you want. I think that's a great idea to do that. And I do have a beautiful gray blanket with some white uh, threads in it, like a very soft stripe, and it has fringe on it. It's one of my favorite throws. It's so beautiful, and it really looks great in a room. So I think gray does go so well with so many different things, and I think you're right. One of the takeaways here is if you do use gray in the room, use it in your foundation pieces and add some color to the room. Don't skip color altogether. Yeah, and gray is very grounding in a room, uh, particularly if you're talking about a larger piece. So if everything feels sort of floaty, like if you went in into the the white phase really hard and there's a lot of white in your rooms, adding a bit of gray, particularly in a larger piece of furniture, is really going to ground the room. And that's a good thing. And so think about adding a gray piece that's pretty substantial to your room if you don't have something like that already. And it really will transform your whole room. Now, how to use gray now? Now, we've already told you, don't make everything gray. So that's the old days. That was the 2011 to 2015 trend to use gray everywhere. We'll pick the right gray paint. Uh, Anita gave you uh, lots of choices today. You know, re-listen, go to the show notes. You can get the links to all those. Make sure it's got a warm undertone and then use the differing shades from light to dark, whatever works for your particular room or piece of furniture. Uh, try a charcoal gray sofa or accent chair or even ottoman. Some piece of furniture in a charcoal gray is absolutely lovely. Work in heathered gray textiles and make sure they're chunky. That adds a lot of interest to, to the eye and of course also uh, to the touch. And mix your gray with other colors. So many colors work well with gray, as we mentioned, but absolutely gorgeous with other neutrals, with soft pinks, with the lavenders that Anita loves, and even grays and browns. So And da- blue. And blue. So still use gray. If you have it, keep it. If you haven't tried it, try it, embrace it. And if you want to move on to the next it color, go brown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting you mentioned about the wall color because I did want to bring that up again too, is if you already have gray walls, what should you do? Because it's not as hot as it was, but it's completely classic. So I think if you've got a workable gray color on the wall, I absolutely would keep it. But if you're looking around and thinking your gray looks harsh, then I would paint over it. And I would go with, um, yeah, maybe a soft white or a soft gray. The bottom line is just because you have gray on the wall does not mean that you need to get rid of it. So, yes, gray is still relevant. Yay. I'm glad. I don't want to paint it again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as always, I mean, it really is such a personal choice, and we don't like telling anybody what to do. We just tell you what's going on, what's on trend, what's kind of now, and then the decision is yours. Absolutely. What's our definition today? Today, I thought it would be a good day to define the difference between a rush seat and a caned seat, because I think there's a lot of confusion about which is which. So much confusion. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I don't know if people are, you know, staying up at night worrying about it, but I'm not sure everybody knows the difference. It's good to know. Give it to us. Okay. So a caned seat, the caning refers to either strands of cane being woven by hand through holes that are drilled in the frame of a chair, or it uses pre-woven cane, which is basically a sheet that is woven in a diamond-like pattern and with small little reeds of caning around them. And so these are the, a lot of times it's antiques or maybe sometimes I see French chairs that have a caned back or seat that are new, but a lot of times this isn't an antique. And so these pre-woven cane sheets kind of can be, you might see a ridge in a chair and that's where those sheets go. So that's an example of a cane seat. And I'm going to have pictures for you to look at. I'll have some links so you can see what I'm talking about. Because the rush seat is actually a, it's a woven seat, 
made out of long grass-like vegetation that's been dried and used to weave the seat of the chair. So there's several types of materials that you can use to make a rush seat. Uh, so they can be made out of natural grass, cattails, or sea grass, but they're wrapped together and, and twisted. And those seats uh, kind of look more solid, but you can see that there's a, a pattern on them. And those tend to last 20 to 30 years. I've bought some chairs like that that were very old, and sometimes they are needing some work. The cane chairs kind of make me nervous when they're old because... You know, I feel like they could break at any minute. Uh, and I bought one chair that the caning had already busted in the chair. It was not an antique, but I got the, it was, but it was a pretty French chair I got for $15 because the caning had, seat had broken through and I just made another seat for it. And then voila, we were ready to go. So that's the difference. And I'm kind of explaining the difference, but really when you see the pictures, you'll know what I'm talking about. I have several on it bent wood chairs that were left here in the barn and I've been using them and I resisted using the ones that had the cane seats for what I suspected would happen. Somebody put their heel of their foot through it just now, like just yesterday. Oh, <laughs> no. uh -huh. oh. Sitting on the chair with one knee up with the heel of the foot and all of a sudden oh. I heard... <laughs> Yes. That was that. Oh no. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I cried a little inside. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and what I did on some of these chairs, I haven't done it with all of my old chairs, was I used a saber saw and cut a piece of kind of like really thin plywood, uh, more like Luon, and put that on top of the chair and then put a seat cover on top of that. So you couldn't tell that I had that on there. But that was protecting the caning so no one was actually sitting on the caning but I get yeah. a visual of you like with a big sword saying on guard right now like a saber <laughs> saw, saw it's a saw sounds like <laughs> a sword to me i don't know that was funny inevitably with the new year come wellness goals one very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month 
of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Okay. I have an interesting crush. Now, I haven't tried it, but my client Lisa has. And so she turned me on to it and I'm going to do it. I'm actually collecting my pile right now. It's a company called Four Days. So F-O-R days, kind of like four better days sort of thing. What they are is a completely closed loop fashion company. How it works is you pay $20 to get their bag sent to you and it's uh, got their logo on it. It's a kind of a really cool bag. You fill it with 15 pounds of clothing. Now, this doesn't have to be stuff that you would take to a consignment store or stuff you would even take to Goodwill. This can be really the dregs. It can be everything from old socks, onesie socks, underwear, even towels, sheets. They'll take anything that's a textile, anything that's fabric, and then they recycle it. uh, And then they create very nice looking basics. If anyone's familiar with American Apparel, they went out of business, but they were around for a long time and they did basics really well. I would say it's probably along the line of that quality and that type of clothing. Great t-shirts, great sweats, uh, great loungewear, things like that. They have for men, women, kids. I'm hoping maybe they'll have some decor at some point too. Fourdays.com, 20 bucks for the bag, and then they give you a $20 credit. So you pay for the bag, but basically you get the money back in credits to use in their store. So you're preventing all of this from going to a landfill. And there's amazing statistics on their site as to not only the fact that you're keeping these clothing out of the landfills, but then what is it doing with respect to not having to make new fabrics and all the water that's saved. So it's very compelling. I think that's a great idea. And it reminds me of Mount Indigo. Uh, My friend Jessica has started that company and they recycle denim jackets and other denim products. Denim material is so hardy and robust. It's really hard to destroy. So what a great way to keep things out of a landfill is to recycle denim products because, you know, they're going to last longer than we are. Anita, what's your crush? My crush is the movie Juliet Naked. And I say that hesitantly because there is actually no nudity in the movie that I remember. But Naked refers to a raw version of a song, which is called Juliet. So Juliet Naked means this just unfinished version of this song. Oh. So it's it's very funny. It, it's, a, it's a British production. And one of the main characters is played by Chris O'Dowd. And he plays Roy in the BBC comedy show IT Crowd. So he's very funny. And in this movie, he plays Duncan, who's obsessed with a singer-songwriter called uh, Tucker Crow, who's an American. And Duncan's girlfriend is just very neglected, and he just he's just obsessed with this songwriter and not his girlfriend. Well, then the girlfriend writes some letter to the songwriter, Tucker Crow, and they start a relationship. And Duncan the one obsessed with Tucker Crow, he just cannot get past it. So it's, of course, this does not do it justice, but it's very, very funny the way it's all handled. The acting, it's very funny. So I will include a link to that. We just watched it a second time and it was still funny. Oh, wow. That sounds really good. Excellent. Well, I love British television or films. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today. And if you want to email us and let us know, well, you fall in on the question whether gray is still relevant, feel free to do so. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.